overhead valves had become the default layout for British and European motorcycles, while the American manufacturers Harley-Davidson and Indian were still producing side valve or flathead engines. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing, as side valve engines were generally simpler, in that there were less moving parts which made them cheaper to produce, easier to maintain and much more reliable, even though they were less powerful and tended to run hot, bringing alternative issues. However, even though the flathead engine lasted to 1973, in the Servi car in 1936, the future beckoned at Harley-Davidson when the knucklehead engine appeared. With overhead valves and push rods mounted inside twin external tubes running up the side of each cylinder, the knucklehead engine pioneered the engine layout that exists to this day in the modern Harley-Davidson Milwaukee 8 engine. By the early 1930s, the limitations of the flathead or side valve cylinder head design were becoming increasingly apparent, especially as more and more power was coaxed out of the engine. The problem lay in the valves running in the main cylinder casting, where they were subject to excessive heat buildup, which was partly due to the use of cast iron for the casting, which isn't a great heat dissipator. The excess heat would distort the cylinder including the valve gear, leading to poor combustion sealing and oil control. Moving the valves to the cylinder head removed a large source of heat the exhaust gases from the cylinders. Overhead valves weren't the be-all and end-all, as lubricating the valves and rocker arms required rethinking oil circulation without excessive leakage. In overcoming the lubrication problem, Harley-Davidson developed a pumped recirculating oil system with a remote reservoir holding the oil. Previously engines had been lubricated by a total loss system, whereby the oil was drip-fed to the crankcase, flung about by the crankshaft onto moving parts and lost by being burnt in the cylinder or leaking through the valve stems. With low power and under-stressed engines, that system was just about good enough, but as power outputs rose, there wasn't sufficient oil in the crankcase, leading it to get far too hot and lose much of its lubrication properties. The Model E Harley-Davidson in which the knucklehead engine first appeared had dry sump lubrication, with oil being circulated to moving parts and the excess being returned to the oil reservoir. Among other benefits this reduced the temperature in the engine. Even though cast iron has poor heat dissipation qualities as mentioned above, this problem was largely overcome with careful attention to the design of the cooling fins on the cylinder head and barrels. Cast iron wasn't all bad, foundries had a lot of experience with the material and could cast it into intricate shapes. Also it was hard enough for the valves to seat directly onto it, without the need for valve seats to be inserted, and it was hard enough to form a wear-resistant interior cylinder surface. If cast iron added weight, then there wasn't a huge problem as the new knucklehead engine developed roughly twice the power of the flathead. The Model 61E with the knucklehead engine was a huge step forward for Harley-Davidson. Increased power was the most obvious benefit, but the gearbox was now a constant mesh unit which was infinitely smoother than the Indian's crash gearbox, fork and blade connecting rods, which place both cylinder axes on the same plane, were retained. However, in line with many new model introductions, the Model E was launched before the engine had been fully tested and was ready. Oil leakage in particular was a problem mainly from the rocker boxes, caused by overly complex shape of surfaces to be sealed, leading to gasket failure after many cycles of heating and cooling. At first valve springs and valve stems were exposed, but these changed to fully enclosed for the 1938 model year. The Second World War started in 1939, and direct U.S. involvement commenced in late 1941, which gave Harley-Davidson engineers time to continue development of the knucklehead engine up to that point. In 1941 itself displacement of the knucklehead was increased to 74 cubic inches, from the original 61 cubic inches giving even more power and flexibility. Immediately post-war, Harley-Davidson was unable to fill orders due to still enforce quotas on raw materials, steel, aluminum, and rubber. However, before long aluminum became freely available due to the large numbers of wartime mechanical equipment being scrapped. 
and this ironically spelled the beginning of the end for the knucklehead. With the end of the war, the U.S. economy could turn once again to domestic and civilian matters, and one area of the country that received attention was the road system, with many roads being properly tarred and highways built. With these improvements, average speeds went through the roof and exposed the weaknesses of many pre-war engine designs. More speed needs more power and more power creates more heat, which is something the all-iron knucklehead engine didn't need and couldn't cope with.